Hello, everyone. This is our Holy Week devotional. Pastor Eric here, joined, as usual, the Holy Week by Veda, our prophetic stream leader, by Natalie, our director of operations, and our elder this morning is Scott Reese. Happy Friday, Good Friday, or Black Friday. And uh, we wanted to take some time to meditate on the crucial uh, Friday night events where Jesus is brought to Pilate and ultimately uh, uh, committed to the cross. So, Scott, would you uh, read? We're going to be reading. If you haven't yet, grab your Bible to Matthew 27, starting at verse 19. Okay, my apologies. Give me a moment, I've lost it. <laughs> the passage that is, not the... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, don't have anything to do with that innocent man for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called Christ? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Powerful, powerful passage of scripture. Uh, observations, a uh, lot that can stick out. What sticks out to you all? One of the first things I do with these kind of passages and others is I am struck by just the humanity of Jesus and what that must have been like for him uh, to endure this trial, uh, to endure the disappointment. Uh, yeah, just uh, as a human being, and we know he is God, but as a human being, he endured all of these moments and more for us. So just imagining the humanity of what was happening in his spirit mm -hmm. as he's uh, enduring these days and these moments. Having the people argue back and forth and then the scripture really doesn't emphasize it just says and Jesus was flogged and yet the brutality yeah. on his physical body that he must have endured. Yeah, his spirit and soul and yet also his physical body, and that's just prior to crucifixion. Uh, yeah. For me, it was, um, you know, when they, they say, uh, when all the people spoke up and shouted, his blood is on us and on, on our children, and that just took my breath away. Yeah. I, I just don't think that they understood what they said. I mean, that, that's pretty, wow. Yeah. You know, but obviously Pilate didn't want to go through with this. And so he said, it's their responsibility. I and mean, then for them to shout that, they were just trying to get this over with and done. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Yeah. Natalie. I think for me, it was that starting there with um, Pilate's wife and that she, um, she has been impacted by what's happening uh, through a dream. And so um, 
so what's happening there and you know it's just it's an interesting dynamic between a husband and a wife and you know kind of wonder like what it was like when pilot went home that night but um <laughs> but more <laughs> of like you know pilot certainly was complicit in jesus's execution but he obviously at the very least was very mixed about it and and conflicted about it and so going home to his wife and and what the heaviness of that household must have felt like um, yeah. later that night. And just to think, probably she was not a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. And yet the, what was happening in the spiritual realms during this trial, during the flogging, during the crucifixion, mm -hmm. and that like spilling over into one of her dreams and just Wow, wow, amazing things. It does relate to a, a theological question I'd like us to ponder. I think this text has a lot to do with innocence and, and, and guilt. So you have, in one sense, the people who are gathered are saying, we'll take it, his blood on, on us and our children, which is, you know, disturbing in so many ways yeah. and then you have pilot who says hey i'm, I'm going to wash my hands of this i remember as a little boy watching some kind of church program over easter and the song was uh you can't wash your hands of his blood or something along those lines and i'm like well he did say he's innocent so <laughs> is he innocent or i mean he did wash his hands so let's <laughs> hold on to that question as we uh think about this a little bit more uh, veda would you walk us through the station that uh you and uh, others put together last year yes um yeah so just like with the others as we prayed about them this, um, we just really felt some specific things from scripture the Lord wanted us to bring out. So um, the first thing uh, is that bench of authority that is so upright there and everything's on it. And Pilate had been given authority um, over this matter. Uh, he was the procurator, uh, pro procurator uh, over that area. And pro so counsel. he... He had authority. Um, the photo up there on the top is a photo of Jesus before the people and before Pilate. And I think that's when Pilate's trying to say, you know, he's innocent. I can't find anything guilty about him. Don't you want me to release him? And I thought it was a really good picture. There's also a scroll you can see writing on. And that was the scroll of accusations against Jesus mm. that the people had brought. Uh, brought forth a lot of them were lies um, a lot of them you know nobody agreed they they had a bunch of different things the purple cloth that comes down uh, represents the true royalty of Jesus mm. not mm -hmm. royalty of the Romans or anything this is the the purples you know represents that mm. um, the whip you see down towards the bottom um, represents the whip used for the flogging and then uh, the crown of thorns and the white towel with the bloody hands back up on top where Pontius Pilate washed his hands in that bowl of water. That's what's represented there where he washed his hands, but he still had blood on his hands as you see on the white towel. Mm. Um, the open scriptures represent, you know, the Pharisees, were seemed to be blind to the Old Testament prophecy of the Messiah coming. And um, so that's why that's there. And then the candle burning brightly was uh, representing the Old Testament prophecies that pointed to Jesus mm. and it's light in the darkness. So even though there's a lot of darkness on Good Friday, you know, everything going on, that light burned brightly because the word of God is truth and it pointed right to Jesus. Mm. Absolutely uh, uh, gorgeous. I, I, I don't know the right word. I, I think I, I certainly missed the significance of all of those symbols last year. I uh, caught some of them, but uh, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. 
Um, so, am I to assume that you were answering my theological question <laughs> last year yeah. the, the, with the red hands on the cloth? Yeah, I think because he was the one in authority that if the Jewish leaders could have taken care of that matter themselves, they probably would have, but they had to bring him to Pontius Pilate. So that's why, um, you know, since he was the one in authority and he said, okay, we'll flog him and then crucify him. Um, yeah, so that's why there was blood on his hands. Even though he washed them, there was blood on his hands. Yeah. So that song I heard as a young boy was actually <laughs> accurate. Would you add anything else, Scott or Natalie, to that idea of innocence or guilt? I would say <clears throat> that none of us are innocent. Uh, a key point for me in this passage is the theme of rejection. Uh, the, the crowd had witnessed Jesus' healings. They had seen the miracles. They had seen his compassion. Mm -hmm. They had observed him interacting with people, and those individuals' lives were forever changed. Yeah. And days before these events, they were shouting in the street, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And now they had digressed into uh, the fervor of a murderous mob. Yeah. And they had rejected him wholesale. And I say that not only them, but my sin put Jesus there as well. Yeah. None of us are innocent. And I wonder sometimes what hurt most to Jesus, uh, the flogging. Mm or the rejection of what he represented in his time on earth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that uh, the passage, um, Isaiah 53, 6, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. There is a, that's part of the fallen human condition. We all have sinned. We all have turned away. We're all, uh, our lives and sin and rebellion is part of this story. It, none of us right. can wash our hands, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts or uh, applications from the story that we want to add before we pray? I ask myself, do I still reject Jesus today? Maybe not overtly, but are there ways that I still succumb to a worse version of myself and deny his influence, mm -hmm. deny his beckoning, resist? Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's, you know, I'm really quick to celebrate Jesus uh, when I think he's the king, when, when it's very clear that he is the one who's in charge and things are going well and he's coming to save the day, riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Um, but then like you, Scott, how quickly does that change when all of a sudden it doesn't make sense anymore? Um, and we're living maybe in a pandemic and, uh, and, and it's hard to see sometimes um, how Jesus is king of this. And so where would I be in that situation? Yeah, that is the, that is the great flow of the Holy Week, right? We start with celebration and Hosanna. And then we end with a crying out for his crucifixion. Mm -hmm. uh, and how, Natalie, you put it very well, how easily we can do that in our own lives. Mm -hmm. uh, from celebration during the good times to really rejection, Scott, as you said. Mm -hmm. Ian. Yeah. Well, and I think, too, um, like Natalie says, you know, when things are going well, 
yeah, yay, Jesus. And, you know, but when things are hard, when we're, you know, separated in our homes, you know, we've been scattered to our own homes and we can't gather as the body of Christ, like we so love to do. And that's been really hard, you know, and, but do we just think, well, if Jesus was real, he would change this. Mm -hmm. Or do we really, this is kind of where the rubber hits the road. It, it, that's the way I think of it. You know, we say we have faith and that, you know, he didn't cause this, but where is he in all of this? So, you know, I think for myself, I just, you know, ask the Lord to give me new lenses to see him in all of this. You know, what are you doing, Lord? What are you doing in this? I want to see what you're doing. I don't want to just see that our life has been kind of turned it upside down as a world. Um, you know, I, I really want to see what he's doing in this and, and keep that strong faith and maybe even increase measure of faith. Yeah. And then cooperate with once that's pilot got a really strong word from his wife. Yeah. <laughs> One of the applications is always listen to your wife. And I wasn't going to say it, but I'm glad it's been said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's, uh, let's pray as you feel led by the Spirit. And then I'll close us after a few minutes. Jesus, thank you again for your sacrifice. Yes, Lord. Thank you for enduring every bit of it. You knew it was God's plan, and yet you were human flesh, and you went through every single bit of this entire uh, ordeal for us. You endured the rejection. Jesus, I pray that we would not resist you, that we would not reject your beckoning to us. May we taste anew that you are good. May we pursue the healing that you have made possible mm -hmm. by your blood. Yes. Father, I just reflect back on that candle in the, that station, mm -hmm. burning so brightly. Father, I just... Um, I just ask you to, to help me remember that you burn just as brightly today as you did then mm. and as uh, you did in the Old Testament days where they had that pillar of fire and the, the cloud by day and the fire by night. Lord, help us to see you in all of this and help us to remember that the Old Testament prophecies pointed to Jesus. Everything points to Jesus. Help us to really see that, especially in this time of uh, being secluded in our homes. Father, I just pray that this, um, this Easter season, this Holy Week, would be so different. It would be so um, that you would pierce our heart with your truths, Lord. Thank you, Father. Jesus, I pray that... Uh... You are the king of our lives every day, and uh, we celebrate and honor you as such every day, even when it doesn't feel uh, like there's anything that's in control by anyone. Uh, Lord, forgive us when we, um, when we step away, when we forget that, and when we even um, go the other way. And uh, Yes, Lord, we, we continue to come and uh, say in humility, forgive us, Lord, for we have sinned. Yes, Lord. That we, uh, our actions, our, our rebellion um, was part of the story, Lord. Mm -hmm. We are so thankful that you endured all of this, the, the emotional and relational strain, uh, even the separation from your father, 
but the physical agony and pain, you endured it all out of love for us, not because of the good things we've done, but while we were yet sinners. At just the right time, you died for us. We thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we're mindful of that today. Yes. We pray all this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Just a reminder, uh, we are live streaming tonight, Friday, at 6.30. Uh, our Good Friday service. So hope to see you there, or I don't know if I'll, I won't be able to see you, but see you through the camera there. God bless you.